Welcome to part 3 of the animation course. Today we're finally going to do something that looks like an interface. But before we get to that, one more little example of something basic that is important to know. Because that will show you that you can even morph shapes. And that can be very interesting, like the background that you see behind me right now. Okay, and we're back to the third installment. Let's start with something simple, yet pretty interesting visually. So I'm just gonna create a new frame, it can be any size. And now using the pen tool, let's just start drawing some random blobby shapes. Kind of like that, and then let's create another one. So I'm just simply bending the lines every which way, just to make it a little bit organic and blobby. Just uh, maybe one more. Okay, now for these shapes, let's change their background color. So let's remove the stroke and for the fill, I'm gonna pick a light blue for the first one. Then let's grab the one in the middle, remove the stroke, add a fill, then this fill is going to be a slightly darker blue. Something like this. Then let's grab that shape at the bottom here. And of course, remove the stroke, add a fill, and this time let's go into like some purple shade. It can be a little bit darker too. Okay, something like this. Now let's expand them a little bit, just so they take a little bit more space over here. Simply just make them bigger. Okay, now what we want to do is to add effects and to add a layer blur to them and add a pretty big blur, like 120, to each and every one of them. Okay, a little bit like this. And if you want, you can still modify those shapes, bend them a little bit more, so the final effect of that little kind of weird mesh gradient looks a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna modify the color to be closer to the color that we have, so it's not too overwhelming, something a little bit like this. Okay, now let's duplicate the frame, and now in this frame we can start rotating them a little bit and then moving them into the sides a little bit. So that's kind of like showing that the gradient is going to shift a bit. It's not gonna be in the same spot that it was. And we can stretch this one. Because it's blurred, you don't really need to worry about them stretching in an ugly way. And just play around until you find a combination that looks nice. You can also tweak the color a little bit too. It's gonna add a little bit of text and place it here in the middle and in the other one as well. Okay, now let's go to prototype. And as you see, when I click, the gradient starts to shift in a nice way. And then when I click again, it shifts back. And this is a very cool animation because it allows you to create some nice onboarding screens, then record it and have it in your portfolio as like a nice breakdown from all the reading. How awesome is that? But that's not all for today. Now let's make an app interface with an accordion style photo gallery. Okay, let's start by Picking an artboard the size of an iPhone and I'm gonna change the background to black very quickly and let's create a heading for it. And doesn't really matter how big it is because it's more just to show you the animation. And I'm gonna pick a green, just kind of like a nice looking green that goes into the blue a little bit. And I'm gonna call this sandwiches. Change the font size to 24 make it bold and to optically align it in a way where the distance from the left is similar to the distance from the bottom because if you look at it this way it's 24 but obviously it's not because optically it, this just seems a lot too high so that's more like it uh, and of course you can add more stuff to the header as well like a back arrow or a menu or some icons just to make it look more like a real app but our goal here is to just create something nice looking in terms of animation so i'm gonna make a new rectangle 
and it's gonna be 240 points high and I'll duplicate it and move it down and the idea is that the distance between those elements is two points so there is this black line constantly visible now let's duplicate each one of them again on top so we have so we have more of those rectangles so basically there are two over here and two over there now let's go select the one on the top go to plugins go to unsplash and run it and let's search for an egg sandwich okay this one looks really nice okay now let's pick an avocado sandwich while having the other one selected and let's find a nice looking avocado sandwich here actually i'm gonna change it i'm gonna go with this one because it has a nicer background okay one thing that we want to do here is to add a fill to both the images and that fill is going to be a linear gradient make sure that the darker color is at the bottom then drag the top color, which is a little bit transparent, to be in the middle of the image. So we don't want it to go like all the way, just towards the middle, like this. And let's make this 50%. Now let's do the same thing on the other one. And let's add ourselves some elements. I'm gonna type in egg sandwich, and this is going to be a smaller font, a little bit now how many calories it has let's say it has 350 but of course this can be a different font size and i'm gonna go with maybe 16. and also we can decrease the opacity just to have a quick and dirty version okay now just make sure that optically this is roughly the same distance from the left and right of course you can use the red square method to test it out then i'm gonna duplicate it move it down one more time it should be at the right height this is gonna be 299 and it's gonna be avocado double okay now let's create a button and i'm gonna do it by actually dragging over the elements that we have here so the button is the, at the exact right height and it's the exact right size. Just make sure that it's 24 and 24. Let's round the corners to be eight. And for the color, I'm gonna pick the color from the top here. That's a nice looking green. Now this can be moved a little bit down so it matches optically this element. And if you're unsure of that, just drag some guides like that from the top just to see that your text is actually within those guides because if the button is like this then this is just gonna look messy and weird okay for this let's add a text and the text will be the price so it's gonna be $15 and I'm gonna change the text to be 16 and it's gonna say get like a call to action that you might want to get the sandwich now let's duplicate the element on top here and i'm gonna use the lightness to decrease the lightness a little bit just like that now let's go to the editing mode by pressing enter while having that smaller rectangle selected and choose just the nodes on the right side so just the two corners and decrease their radius down to zero like this now within that simply align things that are in the middle like that let's group it duplicate it and then move it down to the other element and this one is going to be a little bit more expensive because avocados are expensive so like this and i'm gonna call this stage one okay now let's select everything that's here make sure that the duplicate rectangle is at the bottom there and simply use as mask that should group everything and create a mask that mask is going to be useful now select everything again and use as mask so once we have those groups hidden let's just call it sandwich 2 and sandwich 1 and this we can call the header so what we should have right now is a group with a mask with a rectangular mask underneath which means that if you move the element to the top or bottom it's just going to disappear because the mask is 
the size of the rectangle that we had, which is the same size as the photo. Okay, now before we start playing with this, let's go into this element, and this is important. We want the get to be under that smaller rectangle, which means that if you kind of put it to the left, it's gonna hide under. So previously it was over like this. We don't want it over, we want it under. And let's do the same thing with the other one here. Okay, like this. Now let's duplicate our stages and let's start with the first stage actually. So what we wanna do here is move the get call to action exactly under the element. Now let's shrink the remaining element here to be the size of just the price. And let's change this back to eight points. And now let's move that group to the right like this. And now let's do the same thing on the other screen, but this time with the first element. So just gonna drag this Make sure that it's roughly in the middle because the animation can look weird if it's off even by one point. Now I'm gonna change this to eight, drag this down to size and then place it 24 from each side like this. Okay, now what we want to do is to decrease the height of those masks that we have here, but let's decrease it from the top. So I'm just gonna bring it down until our avocado double text and content is exactly in the middle. You can actually test it like that. So it's 24 from every side. Now let's go into this mask here. Just grab the mask at the very bottom of the layer list and decrease it the same way. Just make sure that it's 24. Okay, it's 24 from every side. So this is exactly what we wanted. So now let's grab this element and bring it to be two points from the one at the top. And now let's grab both of these and bring them up. And now the next thing that we want to do here is to go into the second element on the first screen and grab the image down a little bit. And if you want, you can also expand the image to make it larger just a little bit. And we can do the same thing here. Just make sure that the actual important element of the photo is in place. So if it's an egg sandwich, we want the egg to be visible. And maybe let's increase the size of it a little bit as well. Now let's go into our linear gradient, which is added on top of the image. So this is the image and this is the gradient. And increase it to 100%. What we can do here as well is to bring the gradient up like this. And if it's too dark, you can then decrease it to maybe like 70, like this. And let's do the same thing here. So 70, and then into the gradient, move this to the top and this to the bottom. Okay, let's preview it right now. So what we want to do is go into the prototype and now select that second element to link to the second screen. Choose Smart Animate and I'm gonna go with Ease Out, which is gonna be good. And let's do 400 just so the animation is a little bit more visible. Now let's select the first element on the second screen and link it to the first screen. And the same settings here. And now let's preview it and see what happens when I click on the elements. And yeah, it expands, collapses, and looks pretty nice already. And of course you can also expand it with more information. So like additional things like allergens or ingredients below that. So you can add more text, for example, or you can add a little bit of a card background with some text on it. This is just to show you the principle behind creating accordions like this, nice looking accordions, and just being a little bit creative with that button, because once you enlarge it, you can then take the action that you want to take, which is to buy it or to order it. So let's do one more thing here, which is also pretty interesting. Let's go into design and select the image on that second bottom tab. Now let's go into the image itself 
and we can decrease the saturation of the image. Not too much, because we really want to have some color there, but we can decrease the saturation a little bit. And now let's go into the second screen and to the image on the top here and then decrease the saturation here as well. So the non-selected one is not really fully visible and then the selected one is visible. And if you want the effect to actually look better, you can decrease the size on those smaller tabs and increase the size on the bigger ones. So it's just the size of the actual photo here, not the size of the mask, obviously. Okay, and now let's preview it and see what happens. Yeah, and just like that, we have a nice looking animation that you can switch into movie tickets, music tickets, or plane, or hotels, or anything that you want, and have something nice for your portfolio. And of course, you can add more elements. This is just a sort of underlying principle of how you can do nice looking accordions with a little bit of an interesting touch. When you have an animation like that, you can record it to a GIF and then put it in your portfolio and then have something moving a little bit. It doesn't have to be too complex, but just a little bit of showing the interaction in your case studies is a great way to catch the eye of the recruiters. My tip would be to, you know, place it somewhere in the middle. So when they're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and possibly getting a little bored, then there is something moving a little bit. Just don't go too far with this because that can also be super annoying and you don't really want to annoy recruiters, do you? That is it for today and as soon as this video gets 100 likes and 100 comments I'm gonna start working on the next episode of the free animation course. So until then, see you next time and have a beautiful day. Uh -huh.